Is this more theater? We had a, a musical, a manuscript, and now a play. Ooh, Descent into Hell. Speaking of burning, I wonder if this will have any parallels with Violet Evergarden herself. <laughs> Very on the nose, but I like it. I mean, those those moments are the worst. Oof. It looks good. I, I would legit watch it, even if all the dialogue was like that. <laughs> and now, having killed the king and become the same evil, my character arc has come to a tragic conclusion. <laughs> this is going to be about Violet, isn't it? If we're speaking of tragedy, I can say there are a lot of ways I've experienced pain, a lot of hurt in my life, like everyone. Certain types of pain with time and understanding are easier to heal than, than others. I think two that come to mind as the deepest are, one, having something really treasured, ripped away from you, and coming face to face with a cruelty of the world or nature that you were kind of leading yourself into believe didn't exist so that you wouldn't have to directly face it. Having your peaceful worldview be shattered by something like betrayal, let's say, and having that cast doubt on whether or not you can trust anything or anybody or, you know, are the hearts of men truly evil, that kind of thing. But even that I think can be overcome with just really, really hard truth and just a lot of focus, eventually, at least. For me, a harder one long term is the evil that I've done. And I guess there's something common about both of those things, which is that they're both sort of a, a shocking revelation of evil that was always there but wasn't experienced to that degree of poignancy or, or reality that suddenly is you know thrust in your face in a way you can't ignore and cast out on, on the whole thing you know cast out in your whole self and maybe for that too you know if I am really thinking about it the solution is also truth you know truth about one's own capacity for evil and then having that realization be at least having the benefit of better understanding and maybe motivation to be better to right wrongs to make amends to live well etc. It's a live, living playwright that we will maybe help. Just like Violet must deal with her own burning. That's a storm coming. Big time. What has Violet done? We, there was like this massive cliffhanger that hasn't gotten resolved yet, but that's gonna happen. Speaking of burning, I'm getting emotional just watching this opening for some reason. <clears throat> I feel something big is coming. It's funny how she ends up becoming the ace. What major? I don't know what you're talking about. We don't talk about that here. Someone else who's lovelorn. Oh no. <laughs> heartbreak. Lovelorn and heartbreak. True bachelor pad. What's the point of cleaning your room if no one's coming over? It's not helping. You think it'll help. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. Ooh. Ooh, very, very direct. It can be tough to resist that pull. I think it feels like these things will help you, but a lot of times that's just kind of your, your habit or addiction taking over. You know, people talk about... uh smoking as stress relief as a former smoker and you know not just my own experience but i've read this is true as well it seems that nicotine actually makes you more anxious and more depressed even though people think of it as an anxiety reducer or stress relief or whatever the problem with just about all substance use is that there are good effects at first but then your body sort of takes cues from whatever you're doing it's like well i guess this is who we are time to adjust the ecosystem so that we can achieve equilibrium then you're in a weird place where you just need whatever you're doing or have been doing in order to get back to normal then you're stuck because there's no up there's only down and you're constantly on the way down unless you're currently engaging in whatever the thing is you're doing also you know you hear that people need these things to be creative or to do what they do i think that's largely based on what i just said they're just trying to get back to a place where they feel functional the only sort of weird asterisk on this is how much pain influences creativity you know you hear people say that they need struggle they need pain they need things like that to do anything creative or to pour their soul into works i kind of understand that but i think it doesn't have to be that way and a lot of times you know your output can be greater more expressive more beautiful even if you're doing great i you know it just takes a certain amount of reflection working yourself into certain modes of thinking and really tight focus on things i mean I, I think maybe i have my my most emotional moments when i'm not doing great but i think i do, i'm at my best when I, i'm doing really well when things are going well for me and i feel good and solid overall i think there is a potential trap in kind of glamorizing or glorifying being troubled as a form of creative inspiration violet is an interesting pair for him because she's kind of sort of clean well put together i knew she was gonna do that hope she gets paid extra for the cleaning work don't do his errands for him He's really asking a lot. Good. Oh, she's smiling now. 
That was a different different color when she said it the second time. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and just like that, carbonara, boom. Yeah, I know. Cook cooking. Yeah, I sympathize. <laughs> cooking yourself. You don't say. How did they get that from that? She's just all smiles. I wonder if she already sees some sort of commonality with him in his longing. No, don't look at the empty chair. Don't look at the empty chair! Or any of the pictures you have around your room. That's just the most excruciating thing. If you're longing for somebody, everything in the world is a reminder of that person. It's really hard to escape. You know, just in your house, there's stuff. You go outside and there's stuff. There's an activity and that's also stuff. All these memories. What was it all for? What did it all mean? Oh, she threw it to alcohol, or hid the alcohol. Are they, like, living together for this brief time period? <laughs> this very literal dialogue continues. I am a water spirit. Thank you, for without your water help, we would not have been able to cross the fire. Then it's doing its job, I guess. It's a very meta experience right now. We're watching a girl, watching a girl in media. This is for children? Alright, that makes it a little better. <laughs> It'll turn out in the end that she was the monster the whole time. Does she ever return at all? I'm wondering what the olive story means. What does it mean that she loses her power to speak to the spirits? It's potentially about Violet. It could also be about the playwright himself. You know, he's lost. He's looking for his way home. And he speaks a sort of language that he f might feel in danger of losing if he were to confront his demons. There's some link or at least perceived link he has between his creative output and his personal struggles. How do you slay the dragon and get home? She's really bringing the memories right into his face. Does Violet Evergarden look like his lost lover? I think I miss whether or not this is just that she left or that she died. Or was it his daughter? This is misplaced. And the dragon will not be slayed. We're not talking about Olive. I mean, the parasol was an innocent mistake. It was his daughter. Oh. It's both. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Olivia! I don't want to watch. Oh no! It's coming to the surface. She knows. She does know. You have to. They'll also probably be devastated. It'll probably be both at, at once. That's probably the whole show. She can take a bus. <laughs> Somebody hasn't seen Mary Poppins. Really going into it. This is sort of setting yourself up. Um, be careful what you say to Violet, she'll take it literally. <laughs> She's a super athlete, soldier, extraordinaire. She might pull it off. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> She's going for it. She's actually gonna leap the lake. This is so, so beautifully animated. So 
Seems like she grew up. Pretty close. Good enough. Just for a moment, we got it. That she did walk on water, so that's, does that make her second Lady Jesus? Lady Jesus too. I can't imagine what it must be like to lose a child, or losing his wife, for that matter. I can even imagine that part of the, the comfort, not comfort, but the thing that might have kept him going after his wife's death was the fact that they had a daughter together. He could probably see his wife and his daughter. She was someone that he could care for and pour that energy into something positive. To lose her too... It's, it's just like, what's the point, you know? Where do you even go from there? Well, I gave him a, a, a huge gift of giving him something in physical and symbolic form that gave him a moment to sort of say goodbye and play out his unrealized dreams in a way that allowed him to actually grieve at sort of the, that deep level, you know, that you hit, where it's simultaneously the most painful thing, but also contains beauty in it because there's a part of it that's gratitude, you know, and I think that's often the turning point. It's almost like the full comprehension of all of it, you know, the, the beauty and the pain. And it just is what it is, and it doesn't have to have any any meaning beyond that. It's sort of that, the rawness of the actual event or experience. I'm guessing this is foreshadowing for Violet too, because she's gonna have this moment as well at some point. This is her watching her own future in a way. And I guess that's sort of the monster of the story. There's no villain, although maybe the, you know, the brother might play a certain role in that. It is gonna be something of the human heart. That's sweet. And symbolic of a letting go. <laughs> yeah, she went super far. It's working its way up. It's working its way up. This again. Yeah, when are, when are we going to get this story? There's a lot of burning going on. Did the major pull her back? That's what that meant. That was the significance. It's so awful that she helps all these people, but has to suffer this alone right now. It's a different kind of grief. Grief that you know you've caused. Nah, the house was too stuffy for us anyway. We had a bigger role to play in the whole nation and world, turns out. I, I don't think he technically said that. I didn't realize this was gonna happen this episode, this quickly. This is a lot to take in at once. It's like all at once for Violet. Also, it's so little bit of the. Oh, is a little bit ambiguous. But it seems very un un unlikely. You know, there's, there's no, there's no way around it. There's no fighting it. It just has to happen. Oh man, what a, what a dark way to end that. It's so horrific that it, oh, we get that catharsis and this beautiful moment and re recognition of the father dealing with his grief or having that moment of grief that sort of helps him turn a corner, only to have Violet come, a, come against the beginning of that struggle or sort of the midpoint of that struggle. And not just one, not just the loss of the major, but her own culpability in ending the dreams of people that are very similar to the ones she's trying to help, you know, thinking that she's doing good. Of course, we know that she's doing a lot of good and we know that she has a tremendous value as a person and, you know, we can love her as a character, but I can understand in, in her situation, not being able to see the good that she's doing and only being able to see the bad she's done and thinking that there's a scale that's way more heavily weighted towards the wrongdoing to the point where there's no hope of redemption. That's how it feels. And then on top of that, you know, the one person that sort of gave your life meaning or is something to look at that's beautiful that you can believe in is likely dead. All that was for what? It's just such a, a bleak ending. And it's so amazing that they did both in the same episode capturing sort of two two points in that at the same time, one on the heels of the other, really getting the fullness of, of Violet and who she is and her emotions and what she has to, to deal with in just a couple of minutes. It's really expertly done, terribly painful. And yeah, I, I feel like this story is just taking a major turn.